I danced in the morning when the world was begun. And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. The earth Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated for the reading from Samuel. first book of Samuel. Now this boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not gone, yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I didn't call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, 
Speak, for your servants listening. The word of the Lord. Let us join together in saying a portion of Psalm 139. The men will do the odd verses to begin, and the women will respond with the even verses. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind, press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost part. most part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be made more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need would to, need be, to like be like yours. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I had a little bit of an adventure this week, and uh, 
it continued until just this morning. And the adventure was this. Uh, I had a uh, broken tooth that was pulled out and uh, uh, one of those expensive little pieces of metal put in there that will accept a, a fake tooth later on. Um, that was on Thursday in the morning. And because of that, I wasn't here on Thursday. I was, uh, I was here on Tuesday, my, one of my normal days, and on Thursday, I was at the dentist. They gave me some painkiller, which was nice, uh, and uh, because I always figure that uh, whatever I don't use, I can always sell to high school students. Uh, that is not true, by the way. It's just a funny thing that I say. Pardon? I'll buy it. Oh, you will. That's right. <laughs> You're the reason they have that sign at the pharmacy that says we will not fill prescriptions early for opioids, okay. Um, and so I was looking at the, uh, the bulletin at home and I got very concerned because the lessons were incorrect. The lessons were for next Sunday. And I thought, well, we can let that go except what do we do next Sunday? And we're off and go back and pick up the other lessons. I know that this is not completely episodic. We make some pretty big jumps from Jesus as a baby and being baptized to all of a sudden, you know, he's meeting people under fig trees and things. But um, it still was rankling me. And so I kept emailing Kim back and forth and saying, well, here's the actual gospel. And oh my gosh, the, the Old Testament lesson is incorrect as well as the psalm. So I got all those things to her, and then I made a sheet for us that I was going to run off and hand out to each of you. And uh, Kim tried to catch the people who will be looking at it from home up to uh, snuff. And then I realized when I got here this morning and sat down at my desk that I had the bulletin for next Sunday that I had taken home with me, not the bulletin for this Sunday. So everything was right. And I went to that whole extreme of worrying and, and uh, micromanaging and, and muttering threats uh, against various people uh, for absolutely nothing. Now I'm going to blame it on the surgery and the medications. But it may be that it was my fault. I don't know. I feel a little like Jimmy Buffett. Uh, singing Margaritaville. <laughs> Not because of having any margaritas, but just because it could have been my, my fault. The thing is that it got me kind of roiled up and, um, and trying to problem solve. And I thought, you know, we've been doing this, this being roiled up and problem solving for many months now. We got another letter from the bishop this week telling us that she would prefer it if we would just cease all in-person worship, even though she's not disallowing it, as long as we're following the rules, and we are following the rules pretty well, except I think maybe when before service starts and after it's over, we may get a little closer than six feet to talk to each other, and I'm gonna ask us to back that up to six feet again. Uh, we know that uh, the that one in every 10 people in LA County has gotten coronavirus? Isn't that astonishing? A million out of 10 million people have gotten coronavirus in LA County, which is just to the north of us. And the worst spot in the entire country, perhaps the entire world, is Arizona, where everybody's been going for, for to play soccer and to have a good time and to go out to dinner and go to go to bars, maybe that's not a good idea. But we've been having to be semper gumby, as Ken and Jenny used to talk about, always flexible. We've done worship in so many different ways, in so many different times, and spun on a dime. It's just astonishing. But I think that that's how it's always been, especially for God's people. 
if we're going to listen for the voice of God, and that is certainly featured in today's lesson, we're going to have to realize that when we listen for that voice of God, we've then got to follow what the voice says. Samuel, the little boy whom Dale read about today, uh, lives in a community that feels God's absence. God wasn't very prominent in that time. And God calls out. And that's an extraordinary thing that God calls out. But God calls out to a boy, not a king, not a prophet. And the voice of God is diverse to many different people and different kinds of people. The voice of God called out to Samuel. The voice of God called out to Jesus. The voice of God called out to Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. And he may have said, I have a dream, but I think he could have also said, I heard a voice. And this is what it led me to dream. And I'm pretty sure that the voice of, call, of God is called out to many of us here at various times. Sometimes in dramatic ways, sometimes in gentle ways. But we have heard the unmistakable voice of God. And we, or at least I, have struggled to respond to it. In Psalm 139, we heard some of those verses that tell us how well God knows each and every one of us. And the way God knows us is the closest that we can get to truly being known. Some of us have been married, and our spouses believe they know us, but I know that every once in a while we say or do or they say or do something that is surprising, something that they hadn't known or we hadn't known about the other person. And perhaps we have siblings and we've known them all our lives and yet sometimes they don't know the deepest parts of us because we haven't shared them. We say when we start our worship, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. What we are really saying is the truth of this, how much God knows us. Nothing we can do or nothing we can say or nothing we can think surprises God because none of our secrets are hid from God. And then in John's Gospel, there are some amazing ingredients. One of them is enthusiasm. Jesus met Philip and invited, told him, to join his band of followers. Philip did so enthusiastically. That enthusiasm, and I'm sure many of you have heard this, comes from the two Greek words, en theos. Theos is God, and en means to be in or with. So to be enthusiastic is to be with God. And so Philip enthusiastically went off to find his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel, however, saw Jesus as someone from Nazareth, a Nazarene a country hick. Now I don't know what the, uh, the modern equivalent is, but there are those of us, and I will not say I'm one of them, but there are those whom I've heard say, you know, if you speak with a southern accent, your IQ's about 10 points lower than what it probably is. At least it sounds that way to me, or to them. So Jesus was a, a country hick. It was even said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Have you said that about some city or town or locale? Uh, maybe you grew up side by side with another town that uh, was your rival 
in high school football or something along those lines, or their band just wasn't as good as yours, and you've said, can anything good come out of Corona? We sometimes have that feeling about places, and Nazar Nazar Nazareth was certainly one of those places. And it also had a lot of people who were mixed, racially mixed. It wasn't a place of, of pure ethnicity. I mean, Jesus himself had a Jewish dad and a, a Roman Catholic Irish mother. Well, okay, I found out not too long ago that Mary wasn't Roman Catholic and Irish. But for many years, with the way the Irish sing about her and talk about her, I was sure that she was. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus recalls the story of Jacob at Bethel. Jacob had a dream. Now, I've, I've actually never purchased one, I've never even felt one, but I'm thinking that maybe the Mr. Pillow guy is wrong. Maybe the pillow that Jacob had at Bethel was as good as it gets. I mean, after all, when he, after he'd slept on it, he had this vision of God. Of course, it was a rock or a stone, but nonetheless, Jacob had a dream of wrestling with an angel, and then he saw angels ascending and descending a ladder, and he saw it as the story of redemption and a story of calling, God reaching into human life in a transforming way. Bethel means the place of God. Thus, Bethlehem, our Bethel. What? What? would be our Bethel? Would it be a place that we've been, a, a physical place? Would it be a, a place that we've been in spiritually where we have perceived that voice of God calling to us? I've been thinking this week because as some of you have heard, uh, we got the information a little too late for the Thursday version of the news from the pews. I don't, did you get it in the Saturday one about Sarah's baby? No, we'll put it in next week. But Sarah, um, I always want to say Adams. Uh, I think she still goes by Adams. But uh, Sarah is, uh, is now a mom of two. She had uh, uh, the second child this Thursday or Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning. And uh, I found out about it just before our vestry meeting, but as I say, too late for our use of the pews. And she even sent a picture of the little guy, uh, and he is, like all babies, cute. The, um, the thing uh, uh, about that is I was thinking about baptism, because how do you do baptism in a time when you can't touch people, when you shouldn't touch the water that you're then going to pour on somebody's head, that you're then going to anoint with oil. How do we do those things in this time? But baptism is probably one of those times and places where we are in the place of God. And so is when we come forward and take communion in a strange, odd way in a little paper cup. It still is communion. It still is being with God. And I had another experience this week. I shared with you last week that, uh, that Dick Goodlake was not expected to be with us too much longer on this earth and wondered what I could do. There's been another outbreak of the COVID at uh, their place, Silvergate in San Marcos. And uh, the bishop has told me I can't go anyway to places and and share in that way. So how, how can I offer another way that the church has determined that we can be with God, and that is in praying and anointing and being with each other at moments like that? 
and the best we could do was a Zoom visit. Seems a little odd, but I reached out my hand on the Zoom and, and the, uh, the person who was there with him put their hand on his shoulder and we said the prayers that we say at near the end of life and uh, offered uh, a kind of anointing the best we could do in that setting. Somehow, some way, God goes beyond the limitations that we have and makes those things happen so that we still have, even in the midst of this pandemic, this time of separation, we still have ways that God reaches out and touches us. 16th century Anglican theologian Richard Hooker described all worship as our encounters with angels ascending and descending, just as Jacob experienced at Bethel. And he said that that ascension and descension of angels from God to us is the worship of heaven and the experience of fellowship. Remember how the prayer says whenever two or three are gathered together in God's name? It takes more than just a person. It takes two or more or several of us to make that work. And that's why I'm so glad that we've decided, the vestry and I, that we're going to, as long as it is safe and we deem that we are keeping our responsibilities and maintaining them, we're going to do live worship as long as it's allowed, even if it's discouraged. Because we believe that there's something that we can get through that that we can't get through just a uh, single dimension on Zoom. So I, I know that some of us aren't here, who used to be here every Sunday, because we are nervous and afraid, and that is appropriate and fine. But as long as there are a few of us who are going to be here, and we can do communion, and we can do a kind of gathering with angels ascending and descending, we're going to try to maintain that. Along with enthusiasm, there was the excitement that first uh, Philip and then Nathaniel. And by the way, Nathaniel is also known as Bartholomew. If you wonder why we don't hear much about Nathaniel from this point, another way that he was known. Another way that, uh, that, excuse me, the excitement that they felt and that they followed up on. And belief. Nathaniel was the first one to call Jesus the Son of God. We say it was uh, uh, Peter. But obviously, obviously this predates that when he said, you are the Son of God. So. Let's, even in these difficult, challenging, changing times, even with the confusion that sometimes comes upon us, we'll say it's because of uh, surgery and drugs, even in a time that is, is nothing but constant shifting, let us remember that God speaks. We need to listen. And then we need to respond with enthusiasm, excitement, and belief, as did those in today's lessons. Amen. The prayers of the people called together as a family of faith from every time and place, we are bidden by God to pray that we might share our mutual concerns and offer the secrets of our hearts. Let us pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for the leaders of nations, that wisdom and integrity might prevail, for regions torn by conflict, 
that peace and harmony might be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, for the unity of the body of Christ, that needless div divisions might cease. For Susan, our bishop, for Leland, our priest, and for all who nurture our life together, that the body may be strengthened and our common life enriched. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for this parish, for our presence in this community, that persons may find here the means to a deep relationship with God, and for our ministry of reconciliation, that all may find here the forgiveness of God and the acceptance of each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Let us pray for those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, that food and shelter might be theirs, for the sick and the infirm, that health and wholeness might be theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer. Here you may add your own intercessions, either aloud or in silence. Here's for Ken. Stella and the Kabuligan family. Amen. 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 Prayers for Jake and Beth. Amen. Amen. Prayers for Gary Kendrick. Amen. Amen. For Emily. Amen. 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 Prayers of thanks for the birth of Sarah's child. Amen. Amen. For the leaders of Thomas our... family and baby C. Amen. 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 For Jerry and the soul of Esperanza, and for Dylan. Amen. Amen. By your power, dear God, you raised Christ Jesus, and in him we too will be raised. Receive our prayers and those of all your saints, that trusting in you all the days of our lives, we may know the fullness of your love and the power of the resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another safely. Peace in Christ's name. Peace, peace. peace Zoomers. <laughs>
Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because on the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or traveling prayers this week? We have a birthday. And who is that? My, bro my brother's birthday. This is Mary. Mary, your brother's birthday. And is he, uh, what age is he attaining? What? How old is he? 76. So your younger brother. No, he's my older brother. <laughs> Okay, it's a cheap laugh, but it was good anyway. Okay, where does he live? What? That was Paul coughing. Oh, where does he live, Mary? Oh, um, uh, right now he lives in South Carolina. Okay. We'll send a prayer, a birthday prayer out to your brother in South Carolina. Watch over thy children, O Lord as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Wonderful. Well, we, we found out something I think last week and this week which is that uh, we can have people who are not physically here with us lead prayers or perhaps read the lessons as well. So we'll go back to letting them do that. I know that Patty will be happy because she's been frustrated not being able to participate in that way. But it does come across loud enough, doesn't it? I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I could yeah. hear it, yeah. So we will, uh, we will do that. Um, and we thank you, Marcia. I know it's a little frustrating for you because there's a delay that happens with, uh, and I don't know if it's just Deleuze or um, what, but uh, that's always kind of an issue when we do some of those things uh, that way. But we appreciate it. You did a good job. Uh, Thanks. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one of the things we found out about this week from the bishop's uh, latest letter to us is that we can do um, Ash Wednesday, but not in the usual way. Surprise, surprise. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create little cups like we did for communion for Christmas. And we will get those little cups with some ashes in them. So we, it's a good, good time to have a lot of ashes, and I think we do, uh, unless we got creative and threw them away last year. No! Oh, good. And uh, they'll have a top on them, little plastic cups will, and we will send uh, those cups out to people who would like to participate. We will have a service here where the ashes are imposed, but we'll all impose our own ashes. Okay, I mean, it's, you can't come up here and have me dip my thumb in and impose ashes and dip my thumb in and put, and I can't change gloves for every person. So. We can impose our own ashes. We'll all do it at the same time, whether we're here or at home. And uh, because it is not sacramental. It's not like, uh, I mean, we can't just send communion home to people and say, do whatever you want to. But actually, could people could do the ashes whenever they wanted to. But we hope that you'll do them uh, at the service on Ash Wednesday. So we may only have one service on Ash Wednesday. Whether that's at noon or in the evening, we'll have to uh, hear from you all to say what you would like, if, if that will even work. Um, but uh, And then there's that wonderful thing that God has done for us. He's, he's turned January days into July days, 
And uh, I mean, 85, we don't need a stinking heater. This yeah. is wonderful, yeah. kind of, uh, in a strange way. Um, and uh, so we uh, are fine. Now, I think I told you before, but we no longer have tarps up on top because the wind just won't leave them alone. So if we do have rain, uh, do one of two things during a service time. Either bring an umbrella or stay home because we can't protect you like we did uh, a couple of times when we have those wonderful tarps up there. And much as I love our, our shade, and we wouldn't be having a surface out here without this, especially on a day like today, um, it, the water does come through. So the challenge is we may have to get to that point where if we do have a service while it's raining and there are any people here, we may have to have a couple people up here holding uh, umbrellas over the altar so that the various things up here don't get uh, ruined. But anyway, we'll figure that out as we go along, just as we've been doing since the middle of March. Do you realize 10 months? Astonishing, isn't it? It's amazing. You guys have been terrific. The only good thing, I mean the only great thing, is that since we started back up with live worship uh, in the summer, Pat has been here almost every Sunday. And from my perspective, that's a great thing. Uh, it's great to have here, her here helping Kathy and Chris lead uh, worship with their music. So um, that's a good thing, and I thank you. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's hard. It's about as far away as you can get. <laughs> Hello, Chris! <laughs> so, we tried to say, just bring the uh, organ out here. And she said, no, we will not be doing that. <laughs> so she brings it out here uh, in a uh, audio way. Audioly? I don't know if that's a word. Audibly. Audibly. Yeah, that's word. Thank you, Nelson. That's good. Um, also, I don't have an update on uh, Dick. Um, I did the prayers with him and also had a conversation and prayers with Beth um, on Tuesday, but I have not heard anything since then. And the sad thing is I can't call in and ask because of HIPAA rules. They, they, they can't, they're not supposed to tell. So I have to wait to hear from the family or I have to call them and then, or, or I can text and uh, hear back. So I will do that this afternoon. And uh, Sarah's baby boy is over eight pounds when he was born. So he was a healthy chunk and uh, he's very healthy and doing well. His big brother is pretty excited to have somebody to boss around. And uh, so that's a, a fun thing for Felix. They haven't officially, they hadn't officially named him on Friday, but uh, I think they said, and here we go with the, the brain power here or the memory, is I think they said Isaac. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay, good. See, I, I did send it to some other people as a backup, so that's good. But anyway, so I think that's what his name will be. Um, so, anything? Father Leland? Sir, ma'am. Dave. Yes, we have some um, prizes to give out. You and Kathy Wood have some prizes to give out. Oh, okay. For Kathy. the um, mystery photo contest for Christmas. Yes, thank you. Okay. Gee, that... There should have been a, a, a kind of a visual cue or something. You know? <laughs> oh, look, give me those presents in the, in the chair next to you. <laughs> well, we did our best. Yeah, I know, but it takes a lot. So, Kathy, uh, you can come on up, stay six feet away, but uh, come on up. You want to do runners up first? You all remember what this is, don't you? <laughs> that uh, in Advent and a little bit after, uh, Kim and uh, Dale have put together this contest that asks people who have pictures of themselves from when they were uh, small critters um, at Christmas time to send those in and then they give us uh, outrageous clues. Uh, I, I think I like the one that uh, said that this person's name was repeated three times in a uh, uh, Beatles song. A sitcom or what, what was it? A Beatles, Beatles song. song. 
Yeah. <laughs> Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> well, but there was also the one from that was said oh, in their sitcom three times, wasn't there? No, maybe not. Okay. Are you still on drugs? Marsha, Marsha, Marsha? Marsha, 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 Marsha. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. a sitcom. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Much. Okay, so uh, there are three places, first and second third. <laughs> first and two runners up. Yes, okay. Because all were so, I mean, it's tight, tight, tight race. Tight mm -hmm. indeed. So there were a total of how many uh, mystery children? Five. Five, okay. So did the, uh, how many did the runners-up get? Did they get like I don't more? recall, but uh, I knew, uh, Kim gave me the rundown and so forth, but it was all, everybody participated very, very seriously in the thing, and they were all, all you know, really, really up there in the number. Did spelling got. count on the names, or? Uh, <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. <laughs> all right. No. So uh, you have a runner-up there. Yes, and I do. that goes to? This goes to Jan Reed Massman. Yay! Yeah. 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 Today, Jan. Yeah. Congratulations, Wonderful. Jan. Let's just open it for her and use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, it has no. to be. A Kim, do you want to open it up and show what it is? I know what it is. I know you, but do you want to? You, you, want, you want to reveal it to the pictures. congregation? This will be a surprise to me as well. This is the big reveal. Oh, no. Big reveal. Is Jan on soon? Jan on today? No. So she'll never know we opened it up later. <laughs> That's right, yeah. She watches and, this later. And neither is the other runner up. So. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay, this is this is good. Read it. God answers knee mail. Oh, oh, oh. that's cute. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Put it back in. There you go. Everybody, take a look. <laughs> See what you missed out on. <laughs> they didn't have to be present to get the prize, did they? Come on. No. No, the people that didn't participate. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm still trying to find my picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. And then another runner-up, and this goes to? This one goes to Marty Van Houten. Marty Van Houten. Okay. Is it anything similar? It's it, the same thing. Runners-up or okay. equal. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and then. This is the roll. big one. Grand Price, <laughs> the best guesser, Diana Barrows. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Congratulations, Diana. Thank you. Thank it's you. something you need and want. Oh. <laughs> Should she open it up? Yes, she will. Oh, oh, she will. will. Please do. Can you go up to the front? Oh. And we can spread out a little bit. Diana told me um, around Christmas oh, time no. that she had another did, apron. Did not have an apron. <laughs> She's a great cook. I just, I go like this. <laughs> Can you read what it says for us, Kathy? Catch up with Jesus. Let us praise and relish him. Because he loves me from my head to my toes. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Wonderful. Congratulations. I wear that every Sunday. Okay. <laughs> So you know what you don't want to wear? Thank got you. Now you have eight. two aprons, Diane. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Dale and sure. uh, Kim, for the excellent contest. And uh, thank you for participating. Grand prize winner and <laughs> runners up. Um, so Ash Wednesday is the 17th of February. But between now and then is everybody's favorite the annual meeting. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, we can't do the annual meeting in person. We can do, unless things change, worship in person that day. So we'll in-person worship, and then we'll all scurry home, and we'll do the annual meeting. We have to have 20 people, or we can't have the meeting. So I'm begging, imploring, pleading, See, we usually get you here with food. 
we bribe you with a nice meal, and uh, Arthur has been great to uh, to do that. I asked Arthur if he thought that he and Rebecca could go ahead and, and do that again this year, and then just deliver the meals to our homes. <laughs> he was a little reticent. So maybe if I tell him that uh, Diana will help cook in her brand new apron, <laughs> it'll change things. But um, we, uh, we will elect three people to the vestry. We will bid a fond adios to three people. Uh, Kathy Wood, who has been senior warden this last year, will go off. Um, Marty Van Houten, who has served for five years, and she was able to do that because of a, there's a, a little bit of a um, loop in the, uh, in the bylaws, and that loop says that if you fulfill somebody else's unfulfilled term, and it's less than three years, you can then be elected to your own term uh, when that one is over. So Marty fulfilled somebody's two-year term, and then she and Kathy ran on a, uh, a buddy ballot, and uh, they said, if you'll do it, I'll do it. And so uh, they, uh, they both served this last three-year term. And then there was somebody else. Oh. No, I don't remember who it was. Uh, but everything around here that works, works because he's been working overtime. And uh, that's Paul Harris. And he will be going off after a three-year term. So, but he's already chosen somebody to be his successor uh, on the vestry to take this job, and that's uh, John Winninger. So, uh, uh, John, you have pretty much said you'd do it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, anyway, we, uh, we will also elect people to be the uh, delegates for the diocesan convention. Usually, we do that by getting people to, to uh, volunteer at the time, and then we vote for them. We're not going to be able to do that this time, uh, so we're going to have both the vestry and the delegates um, pre-selected. You can nominate yourself, you can nominate someone else. We'll make sure everybody who's nominated says that they will serve if elected. And then, and I'm sure most of you knew this, I had to find it out in this last week or so, but uh, Sheila and I did some exploration and found out that there is on Zoom something called polling, P-O-L-L-I-N-G. And it allows you to do an Australian ballot uh, that's accurate as all get out. And we will do that. We put all the names up and then tell everybody, now please vote for the three for vestry or the two for the delegates. And it will tabulate those votes and give us uh, an immediate, it's very fast, uh, an immediate understanding of who won. We'll make out a, a paper ballot that has those things on it and keep it like we're supposed to for the year until the next annual meeting. So anyway, uh, I think it'll work fine. We just have to be there. Um, Kim is also going to take the reports that are sent in, and she's going to, uh, once they're uh, looked at for typographical issues and stuff, she will run those and send them out to those who are members of the congregation. So you will all get that in color, bold, wonderful color, probably overwhelming color, if I know Kim, because uh, she's colorful. So, uh, and then we'll print up a few paper ones so we can send to the bishop and that sort of stuff. But um, So in some ways makes it easier uh, if we can get around the not being in each other's presence. So, and that's on the 7th. And that's also two other very important things that day. Do you know what those are? Football. Super Bowl. Sheila's birthday. Oh. So, and Sheila's always so pleased when I come up with something fun at the church on her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. <clears throat> anyway, so, you guys all have that, and there's something else you're pointing at, Kathy. Yeah, uh, have you any idea what time we'll start? Well, I think we will strive to get done and out of here as close to 11 o'clock as we possibly can. So, noon. 11.45, noon, 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 noon makes sense? Okay, noon, so grab a sandwich or something in between time. And uh, we'll go through the meeting as quickly as is, is reasonable. And if you're interested 
in those positions, let us know. Let one of the uh, people who is going off vestry, Paul, Marty, Kathy, know. They are the nominating committee, and that's how we will get our list of names. Sheila, did you have something? No, you're just standing. OK. All right, let's uh, sing a song. Hallelujah. 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 